um, the law firms sued uh, the tobacco companies in the name of the states, collecting billions and billions of dollars. Um, the, the lawyers became fantastically rich uh, off of the contingent fees. Um, the cost of cigarettes uh, rose dramatically, which from a policy standpoint may have been the one good outcome, I suppose. Um, and uh, monies that came into the state coffers, which were supposed to be used uh, for um, uh, health care, um, were generally squandered um, in other ways. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, but some people would look at it and say, well, um, we did manage to raise the cost of cigarettes by about 100%. Uh, the government would, uh, was not going to do that. Uh, as a result, um, cigarette smoking is down, you know, dramatically in the United States, particularly compared to other countries. Um, and uh, the costs to, to government at all levels because of those lower levels of smoking uh, will go down in terms of health care costs um, into the future. And so that this was an example, uh, despite all of, the, all of the problems with it, this, is, this was an example of uh, legislation by litigation, if you will, um, which had uh, lots of problems, but also achieved in the end uh, a result that makes sense from a public policy standpoint. Um, so some of these cases make sense, some of these cases don't make sense. Um, I think a lot depends how you view them, a lot depends on your politics about the substantive issues. The one thing that, that does occur to me um, as uh, um, uh, a peculiarity, a structural peculiarity in the institution of attorneys general uh, in this country and in California that may contribute to uh, both abuses, um, and, uh, and activism of a kind that, uh, that, that I might like, um, but, that is, but that certainly makes the institution very different than, than you find uh, 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 historically in this country, is the fact that AGs are directly elected. Now, um, that's been the case for quite a while in California. It is now, as Bob mentioned, it's the case in all but about six or seven uh, states around the country, and we and we when we hear that, we sort of nod and acknowledge it, and think that well, well there's nothing particularly unusual or, or surprising about that. But if you step back for a second, ask yourself, how would the federal government function if the Attorney General of the United States were separately and independently elected, potentially um, as a political adversary or enemy of the president, a member of the opposing party? And the two of them were at odds or worse over a substantive law enforcement policy through the entire term of a president. That would be totally bizarre. If a president of the United States is elected and he's elected on a particular set of policies having to do with uh, law enforcement or antitrust or securities law enforcement, and then he turns to his attorney general and starts discussing what his uh, agenda is and, uh, 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 and what he thinks the voters um, uh, have, have want him to do, and the Attorney General just decides, well, no, that's not my agenda. I'd, I'd like to go in a different direction and do things very differently. Well, that's what we have in California. And it's really quite bizarre, notwithstanding the fact that it's done that way in a majority of the states. I suspect we have that kind of a system because it was the, the, the founder's intention uh, to weaken governors and to create a separate uh, rival uh, center of power uh, in government. But it also means that you have an attorney general who is essentially, as the chief uh, law enforcer in the state, who is essentially uh, unaccountable politically. I mean, you might say, yes, well, he's directly elected, so he's accountable to the people, but, but let's get real. Um, what, what, what uh, 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 an attorney general uh, basically uh, uh, is given a budget and has a large staff of lawyers and the reality is that uh, while he might get punished um, by, by voters at some uh, point in the distant future, 
There are, there, uh, most of the things that he does, or she does, are, are generally under the political radar. And because you're not answerable to the governor, you're really not accountable to anybody. Now that troubles me. Um, it troubles me, and, uh, and I'm, I'm not someone who, who would be particularly afraid of having a governor with, with uh, greater control over the executive branch that he or she is supposed to be running. Um, it wouldn't trouble me if uh, uh, attorneys general either ran on the same ticket um, as the governor or were simply appointed uh, by the governor. <coughs> anyway, that's the system that we do have, and, and, I, and I think that, that characteristic that peculiarity of, of being uh, um, unaccountable um, to the chief executive of the state is, a, is an important fact uh, which, is, which underlies a, a lot of the, the, the problems uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, many of us have with the behavior and the, the agenda of, um, uh, of state attorneys general. Thank you. Um, it's really nice to hear that some issues are better decided in a courtroom. That perked my ears up. Um, well, John, you agree that some public well, policy decisions are better in the courtroom? And let me, let me point, ask you another one that's a, a follow-up. Can I answer that one first? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, because uh, the, as, as uh, Peter laid out, there are fundamental issues of federalism when you have an elected attorney general. You know, I'm supposed to talk, I, I wasn't really going to get into the federalism issues, although I'm on the board of directors of the Sacramento Federalist Society, I was going to talk about taxpayer issues, but clearly there are really profound issues of federalism here. Um, what can the legislature do uh, to an to a, uh, AG that's deemed to have strayed off the reservation? They can cut off his budget. So there are some controls there uh, you can have. Um, but. The issue, let's get back to the issue uh, Peter talked about, the, the, the cigarette, uh, you know, we've increased the cost of cigarettes uh, via government action. Is that not a good thing? Um, an argument could be made one way or another, but I guess uh, getting back to the federalism issues, I would say, is that not an issue that should be fully ventilated in the <coughs> legislature? because you hear a lot of uh, testimony one way or another. One thing that the AGs may never consider while they're pursuing tobacco companies, and tobacco companies are horrible, everybody knows they're bad, but, but the, the societal consequences of the increased cost of cigarettes is it's a regressive action by government, disproportionately impacting the low and middle income, because rich people can afford all the cigarettes they want to buy. Secondly, as AGs pursue this policy, do they ever consider the avoidance behavior of the consumer? In other words, bootleg cigarettes. Going out and finding cigarettes on the black market, resulting in increased revenues to terrorist organizations like Hamas or Russian organized crime. Is that ever considered by AGs? Those are the kinds of issues that could be brought forward in a legislative hearing where you can say, okay, if we want to, as a state, pursue higher government costs on tobacco companies, let's hear all the issues. Um, so uh, I think that's very important. Um, some of the cost issues, again, wearing my taxpayer hat, um, is there not a cost with differing branches, if you will, if you will of state government, the executive and the attorney general, pursuing what may be policy agendas at cross purposes. If uh, Bill Lockyer or Jerry Brown are pursuing uh, global warming policies against San Bernardino County, uh, are they stepping on the toes of the State uh, Air Resources Control Board? Of course they are. I is it in the taxpayer's best interest to have the executive and the AG pursuing different policy agendas on the same subject? And you may choose, you may say one is better than another, but as a taxpayer, wouldn't it be better to say, hey, you guys ought to be reading off the same sheet of music. It doesn't make any sense for the state of California to be pursuing policy agendas at cross purposes at taxpayer expense. That is one major concern we have. And I'm just going to touch briefly on the other big taxpayer concern we have, and that is the whole issue of contracting out, which we haven't yet touched on, 